there your product itself has the marketing component built in. It is solving the requirement for you to go use something so that you smell fresher in the morning. Right? Baked in talks about exactly that idea that creates something in your product or service or business which will, once people find out about it, once I know, once I've tried it, people will return and use it once again and again and again. So I have a similar example. Our friend shared an example about eBay earlier in the morning, right? I had experience with them. Amazon sells this thing called Kindle. Anybody heard of it? Kindle is a device where you can read e-books. So I read a lot of books. So somebody had gifted me a Kindle. Unfortunately, one of my uncles while visiting happened to sit on it. He didn't realize it's actually an electronic device. It's quite slim. After he sat on it, Kindle chalna band ho gaya. Now what do I do? So I call them up, ask them for a replacement. The customer service, service executives, they weren't in India. This is about three years back, 2010. So I had to make an international call to the US number. The customer service executive who's on the phone asked me what the problem with my Kindle is. I tell him it's broken. He's like, can you define how it's broken? Is there visible damage? Is there any components? Are there glass pieces or plastic pieces broken? I tell him, no, the screen isn't coming on. I'm trying to tell him, I screwed up. I, somebody sat on it. He's like, so that's okay. That isn't covered under my conditions of checking. So he runs a check. He asked me to do a certain amount of things to check if it was working. This entire conversation took all of 60 seconds, after which he asked if I can put, he can put me on hold for 30 seconds. I explain that I'm calling from India and this is ISD call. He apologizes but says that he would still need to place me on call. Am I okay with it? Or he could call me back. I said, okay, fine. The guy's being nice enough. I'll be on hold. I wait on hold for 30 seconds, after which he comes back on and tells me he has shipped my replacement Kindle. Have I translated into a permanent customer of Amazon? The challenge here was empowering the only point of contact with the customer to take control and ensure what we call brand loyalty. With the right systems in place, with the right processes in place, it's not impossible. But they realize that you talking to a manager on a call center is actually irritation on your front as a customer. So can they make a process? Can they make a checklist? Which is why he asked all those questions. They made a system so they could ascertain, do you fulfill the requirements for a replacement? Which is what a manager would have done anyway. They enabled the first and the only person you're talking to with the power to do that. He ran it through the system. That took 30 seconds, which is why he informed me. And once, rather than asking my permission, he solved my problem. That is why I will buy the same book or the same thing which I can buy on 20 sites from Amazon. Have they managed to get that component right completely? So on the internet, the challenge becomes reach, access, results. All of these are good things. This is why you should be on the internet. But these are also reasons why every competitor of yours is also on the internet. So when that opens up to everyone as a market, these are things you have to think a lot about, which wasn't the case earlier. If you happen to have a store at Connaught Place and you have 20 customers who may arrive, if they are in Connaught Place, you have more or less captured those customers, right? They'll walk into your store. Your competition would only be when somebody opens up shop next to you. On the internet, it doesn't matter whether they're in China or in India. They are next to you. They are a URL away. So you have to work harder on this offering. You're following why I'm telling you about this? What is the difference when you have to think digitally, when in thinking online? What changes in your offering at the very fundamental level? So would you like to see some success stories, case studies? Videos are slightly better voice over than me, more interesting. So anyone here who's interested in watching a home appliance product video, which talks about selling food blenders. Anyone else here like food? Most of my case studies somehow match to revolve around food because it gets across to Indians very well. Okay, so has already seen it. So, the whole idea is I can sell you something as dry and boring as a blender, a food blender. And still, I think it's interesting enough. Why don't you see and tell me? Will it work?
Will it blend? That is the question. I love my new iPhone. It does everything. But will it blend? That is the question. Let's find out. I think I'm going to push the smoothie button. I smoke. Don't do this. Now you fans on YouTube have asked me to blend an iPhone. So I did it. But I have another. And I put this on eBay. Anybody here own an iPhone? Yes? Did it hurt to see that happen? <laughs> Slightly, right? <laughs> so now, would you share this video on YouTube, on Facebook, if you saw this? Would you hit share on it? Why? There's actually a science behind it. The term is called Shorten Fraud. You delight in the misery of others. And you are one amongst 8 billion other people. It's human nature. But the whole point is, this is something that's remark worthy. This is something that's interesting. What they have done is they've created an advertisement that sells you the concept of the blender, right? Did you think you just lost 60 seconds of your life you're never going to get back? I hope not, okay? I hope that's also true for these entire 120 minutes that I'm talking to you. But apart from that, the whole point is you can advertise either with a blatant advertisement or what you can call here as a product testimonial. Does this actually testify that this blender can blend literally anything? So now when you put fruits into it, are you sure you're going to get the smoothie you wanted? Right? You just want to make sure okay, while putting the fruits, you don't drop your iPhone also or any other phone. Why is this relevant, however? This was interesting, yes. But why am I showing this as a case study for digital marketing? Anybody? Take a guess. There are at least four marketing lessons to be learned from this video. One, they did not get sued by Apple. What is this video about? What does the title say? IPhone. iPhone. Anybody remember when iPhone was launched? Apple was doing two things. One, it was promoting the iPhone. Two, it was suing everyone who was in competition. They sued Samsung, they sued Nokia, they sued any other co company that launched something similar or whose marketing overlapped with theirs, saying that it was an infringement of some time. Anybody remember the news from on then? Yeah. I know it's really old, but that was the case with pretty much anyone. They did not get sued. Anybody want to guess why? In fact, they are promoting both the product today. Yes. And that guesses the The promotion of the blender is accidental. They are not really selling the product. Right? So one of the gurus of filmmaking is a gentleman called John Hegarty. Anyone ever, ever seen any controversial axe advertisement yeah. on the internet? Any Levi's advertisement? Any ad by Audi? That has been created by that guy. So he founded this company where I used to work called BBH. He is the H in BBH. He once came down to the India office and told us that in film craft, the science of or the study of making movies or advertisements, at least 70% of the movie, the 60 second or the 90 second commercial, should have what is known as product shots. If you are selling an actual product, then you have product shots. If you are selling a story or concept, that should at least take up 70% of the duration. Otherwise, the client is not going to pay. But then you are in trouble. Is that true for this? The product was in focus the entire time, wasn't it? So is this an advertisement by that standard? Is it a good advertisement? Did it feel like an advertisement, however? It did. 
Anybody else? It was a funny video at the end of it, right? It's about iPhone. My question to you earlier was, would you search for a food blender? Would you search for an industrial scent blender that blends things, something quite expensive? This thing was 16,000 bucks, by the way. I know I can't buy it unless somebody is gifting it to me. Yet, I watched the video. The point I'm trying to make is, if you happen to own the company that was making blenders, this is a brilliant hit for you. Otherwise, you wouldn't come up with a way of marketing your product to the masses, where they would know about it, they would talk about it. Does that manage to solve the problem really, really well? Yes, no, maybe? It does, right? Second thing, the reason why this is a case study, why I'm sharing this with you. One of the icons sir asked you about was this cute little girl. I think she's called Dimple, if I remember correctly. She's in a polka dress. She has very cute dimples. She has a bob cut. She's been around. She hasn't grown up in at least the last 25 years that I know of. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Amul girl. She's been around in advertising for a really long while. She's a brand by herself. Have you seen any ads by Amul? Apart from the Manthan and the Operation Flood Wala stuff? The Hoodings. Their advertisements is ongoing. They have been advertising continually through the form of Hoodings. What do the Hoodings say, sir? What do you see on the Hoodings? Correct. They are doing commentary on what is going on right now. So, this phenomenon is called newsroom marketing. There is actually a term for it. Copywriters love coming up with terms for anything that they can. Sometimes they come up with terms for things that don't even exist yet and hope they will be created. This phenomenon is called newsroom marketing. You pick up something which is happening and you create a marketing campaign around it by commenting on it, doing something around it. And then when it fades away, it's gone. Amul is trying to capture visibility or recall in your head by commenting on something which is happening currently, giving it a buttery twist, a muska twist, right? That's what they do. So every time you think of muska or butter, they replace that mentally with Amul butter. Correct? When I go to a restaurant, do you see Amul butter pav bhaji? Okay, so you should come to Bombay. That's quite common. The whole idea is, we, when we ask for butter, we expect Amul butter. Have they managed to capture the consumer's mindset in that way? That they have successfully done. So what this did, why I'm talking about newsroom marketing? This was launched when the iPhone was launched. What happens on the internet? How will this get discovered? You search for iPhone. I get results. I see Apple site. I see what is known as SEO, search marketing. All the results from listing. Then I also see what people are searching for in which there will be a separate list of videos. So the top videos, when you search for iPhone, will be a product review on a technology site or a news article. And amongst them, because of the views it had, would be this video, which says, will iPhone blend? Once it has appeared there, will it be interesting enough? It's riding on the news wave generated by the iPhone and marketing itself. So this tradition, this phenomenon is called newsroom marketing. Anybody here saw the Football World Cup in 2010? Anybody remember it? No football fans? Right? Who was the title sponsor? They had a sponsor. So this might not work very well as an example because most of you don't recall. But Pepsi was the sponsor for World Cup 2010. They only spent $4 billion in partnership promoting them through that entire period. Amongst the ones who do remember the World Cup, have you heard of this thing called Paul the Octopus? Yes. Okay, so you may not remember World Cup, but you remember Paul the Octopus. What was Paul the Octopus all about? So you all heard about that, yet none of you knew Pepsi sponsored. You see the poss lost possibility for newsroom marketing? If somebody had sponsored that 4 by 6 inch glass plate behind the tank of Paul the Octopus, they would have managed to get far more recall than what Pepsi manages $4 billion. This is possible today very easily with social media. You can discover, once again, I'll show you case studies on how people have done this. Brands and small owners. Is everyone following me? You see the potential? Yes, sir. Please, sir. No issues. So this particular video that I shared with you got 10 million 
this is an eight year old video. 10 million views today is not a very big deal on YouTube, sadly. I mean, for me, it's a big deal if, if I make something and 10 million people see it. But on YouTube, 